Good morning, everybody. It's me, Miss Cassidy, and we are here today to work on our next theory lesson. Today, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to do a review of what time signatures mean and how we can use them in our uh, normal music practice. And we are going to talk about dots and what dots do. This is going to be a review for a lot of you, but um, for those of you that isn't, this is really important music theory basic information. For if it's not a review for you, make sure you still watch this video to prepare for today's um, assignment. And just to review what dots do, because it's a thing that it's a little bit hard to articulate. So it's a good thing for us to review. All right, let's talk. just do a quick review of time signatures really quickly. Um, so we have time signatures that are one number on top and one number on the bottom. This is the, at the beginning of every piece of music you will ever do. And the numbers mean different things. So let's use this as an example. If we have the time signature 3, 4, 3 over 4, that top number here, let me put you a little closer so you can see. The top number refers to how many beats per measure. So in the case of one set of bar lines, one little measurement of music, how many beats fall in that measure? So in this case, three is how many beats per measure? Three beats per measure, because the number three is on top. The bottom number refers to what kind of note gets one beat. What kind of note, so quarter note, half note, eighth note, whole note, receives one beat, how many of that kind of note are fit in one measure in this time signature. If it's a four, which is very common for us, that refers to a quarter note. Four, quarter, they go together. So in this case, quarter note receives, receives one beat. So if you were going to write a measure of three, four, it would look like this. Three quarters. That's one measure. Now, it could be any division of that. We know that one quarter note divides into two eighth notes. We could combine two of these quarter notes into a half note. But everything will always add up to three beats, three quarter notes. Just to use one more example, if we have a, um, if we have a time signature that looks like this, three, two, we use the same process here. The three refers to how many beats per measure, three beats per measure, but the two does not stand for a quarter note in this case. It stands for a half note. So in the time signature three, two, there's three half notes for every measure. So one measure, one basic measure in three, two is going to look like this. Three half notes. That's what we're going to look like. Um, so just keep that in mind as you are doing today's assignment. Let's talk about dots for a moment, dots on notes. Today's assignment refers to dotted half notes, but I'm going to talk about more than that today. So we know uh, we, we know that there's lots of different kinds of dotted notes, but let's talk about the dotted half note first. So it just looks like a normal half note with a tiny dot with a period after it. What the dot is telling you is that that note is longer. It is longer than a typical half note. The dot adds half of the original value of the note to the new duration of the note. So we need to know what half of a half note is and then add that to the note. So let's think about this logically. If this didn't have a dot, we would know that a half note is equal to two quarter notes, right? You following me? So there's two quarter notes in every half note. Half of a half note is gonna be one quarter note. That's the amount of time that we are adding on to our, to our half note to make the dotted half note duration. So let's write that out. We know this is equal to half note plus half of the original value of the half note, which is a quarter note. So a dotted half note is equal to a half note plus a quarter note. In 4-4 four, four time, that's three beats. We go from two beats without the dot to three beats with the dot. Now, dots can be used on other sorts of notes too, but the, but the same principle always follows through. The dot adds half of the original value of the note. The other one that we are going to see most commonly is a dotted quarter note. So here's our quarter note. We add the dot. That adds half of the original value of the quarter note. And if you're going to divide a, a quarter note in two, you get two eighth notes. So half of a quarter note is one single eighth note. So the dotted quarter note is equal to a quarter note plus half the original value or one eighth note or an eighth note. Commonly, you will see the dotted quarter note paired up with an eighth note, like this in a measure. You'll see dotted quarter note with an eighth note, and then let's just pretend there's two quarter notes after that, and we're in 4-4 four, four time. If you were going to talk to me that, that would be ta, d, ta, ta. Feel how the dot makes it a little bit longer, it gives it that syncopated um, 
think of a characteristic. Ta, D, ta, ta. The dot is just making it a little bit longer. For today's activity, what you're going to need to do is do a little bit of rhythm math. So add a couple notes together and get a new note that is equal to those note, notes added together. Um, you are going to need to complete measures in a certain time signature so that it fulfills, that we have the right number of beats for, for that time signature in every single measure. So if it's in 4-4 four, four, and it gives you a dotted half note, we know that that dotted half note is equal to three beats. So you need to add a note or a rest that will give you that additional beat to make it correct in that meter. And then you need to draw a grand staff and add the notes, stems, bar lines, and a double bar um, to make it work in 4-4. Four, four. So um, let me know if you have any problems with this. This is an important lesson, so make sure that you're paying close attention to it. I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.